Um, so welcome to the session of the reading group and the paper I'll be presenting today is, uh, it's got a big name, so I just put it into a smaller one, which is called it, let's just call it the lip sync expert. Um, and uh, the authors of the paper are as uh, written you on the slide here and I'll be presenting it. My name is Aishwarya. Um, jumping in quickly into the introduction. Um, so this paper, what does this paper uh, essentially uh, give us? It uh, it gives when a video of an arbitrary person, an arbitrary driving speech, the task of this uh, paper or the, the objective behind the paper is to generate a lip synced video that matches the given speech. The task requires the approach uh, to be constrained not by identity, voice or language. Um, if you are anyone like me, that sentence didn't make any sense. Um, but a video that is attached to it could make sense. I'll just play it so that you guys could make out somewhat what it is going to achieve. So this is uh, uh, this is the the speech that was delivered uh, by a government dig dignitary, and this speech is delivered in German, and there's like an English translator who's doing the translation. Um, you could watch this video and the video that I play after, and you could make out what's happening here. So let's just go ahead and do that. Yeah. Um, framework for our future cooperation. Emmanuel, only eight months ago, you were awarded the past prize here at this very place um, for your enthusiasm for Europe's. I'm sorry, can someone confirm whether they saw or heard this video? Yeah, uh, we could hear the video, I couldn't see it. You couldn't see it? Oh, wow. Hmm. We were able to hear the audio, not the video. Not the video. Oh, that's bad. You should have seen the video. That's the whole point of it, right? I don't know why it's not showing the video. Give me a minute. You can still see my screen, right? What do you guys see now? Yes. 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 We, it's like you, you're showing the introduction page, right? On the presentation. Okay. okay, you're seeing the introduction page, but you guys can't see the video. That's I think you're showing just the presentation and not the entire screen. Maybe you can try that. Share it again. I'm sorry, what, what is that? Uh, I think you're just showing the presentation and not the entire screen. Uh, can you try sharing it again? Let me stop sharing and share the whole screen. Okay, let me see. Uh, share computer sound and optimize screen sharing for video clip. Okay, I just hit that and let's see if this works. Can you see my introduction slide now? Yes. And can you see the video of right now? No. No, we still don't see the video. No, no, the video. the video away from the shared application. This is unfortunate. So resume share. Can I resume share? Okay, so someone can you tell me uh, if I'm share if when when you mean the share the whole screen, how do I do that? I stop sharing and I click those two tiny buttons before I shared. Share screen. Share computer sound and optimize screen sharing for video clip. What else do I do if I have to share the whole screen? Hello, can someone hear me? Yeah. Yeah, but, um, I'm also checking it out. I don't see an option to share the whole screen, but... Uh... Yeah. Hey, did you use the first option, share screen? The first option you'll see yeah, that on the left, work, right? That yeah, so what I, what I see is, I see two uh, small uh, boxes which I ticked right now. It says share computer sound and optimize screen sharing for video clip. I hit both. Uh, basic, let me see if something's advanced. No, no. Uh, are you able to see different screens on your system? Like if you have multiple windows open, like if you have a browser. Yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. you'll, first option, you'll see a screen option. Did you have a, on the Zoom, whenever you try to click on share, you yeah. will see an option. 
you will see an option of share screen then yeah. whatever so use that okay. option and see yeah oh, okay okay that's what you're telling me okay yes i hit screen so now you can see my introduction and yes. now can you yes, see yes correct yes, yes. oh thank you now goodness. we can see now let's a success oh i'm going to play this video again <laughs> sorry guys bear with me <laughs> Um, framework for our future cooperation. Dear Emmanuel, only eight months ago, you were awarded the Pals Prize here at this very place um, for your enthusiasm for Europe. So that you watched. Now just another one. This is post the um, framework for our future cooperation. Dear Emmanuel, only eight months ago, you were awarded the Pals Prize here at this very place um, for your enthusiasm for Europe. I hope you guys could make out the difference. Uh, if you did, can you uh, shout out that you did make out a difference or no? <laughs> Yeah, it was like really awesome. Like it looks like German Chancellor is literally speaking English, which is which she is not. Which is not okay. Okay, so now you get the point. So this is exactly what um, this whole paper is about. Uh, so that they okay. Let me quickly jump into the next slide. Um, so in case the first um, slide didn't make any sense, uh, I think for me um, going through the paper, I realized there were a lot of terms that. Seemed very simple English, but uh, I had to go back and forth a uh, many number of times in order to get the whole concept, like you know, straight in my head. Um, so a few terms that I would always tell someone who would read the paper the first time would be to keep these eight terms in mind because this pretty much com comprises, uh, you know, it's thrown all over the paper. So to go over it in sync in this uh, paper means that the video and audio are rendered and it's rendered as one segment. That's what in sync means. Um, out of sync would be the video and audio are rendered, but not within the same segment. Um, and a talking phase video, that's what the whole paper is about, um, about talking phase videos. So a video of a person that's engaged in a conversation is essentially what they mean by, or essentially what is a talking phase video. Um, and arbitrary identity. So this is uh, something that this paper is really zeroing in on because papers uh, that dealt with, or research that dealt with lip synchronization um, as you've seen in the videos before, uh, did not really um, cover arbitrary identity. So what is arbitrary identity? It's a random person. It's you and me. It's anyone who could make a talking face video. That's an arbitrary identity. What are static images? Visual images that do not move. For example, Mona Lisa, they don't move. They're just images. And then dynamic images, visual images that move like a GIF. Like, you know, we've, we all see GIFs and memes, actually. Even memes are a good example. Um, some move, um, then unconstrained. So unconstrained is the power word in the entire paper because unconstrained is what um, is the essence of this entire paper, I would say, because earlier papers that dealt with lip synchronization was um, under the category of constraint or, uh, or in fact, even when facial recognition was being actively um, recognized by the AI community as a challenge, they uh, the, f the very first thing that uh, they did was uh, actually break off from the concept of constrained video. So what is a constrained video? A person with a particular color dress, with a very neutral background, with a very neutral expression, with no glasses and, you know, a, a very constrained environment a person is talking. That's a constrained uh, environment and that's a constrained uh, talking face video. That uh, to recognize a person's face when a person is talking in such an environment is easy. But when the person is in an unconstrained environment, say, you know, a CCTV footage or a person in a restaurant or with any background, any profile, any view um, needs to have a facial identification done, then it is essentially falls under the unconstrained category. And this paper especially deals with um, synchronizing lip movements of an unconstrained uh, video that is an un video of a person who is speaking uh, under unconstrained um, circumstances and third one uh, the last one was uh, the lip sync itself so lip movement of a person that is reflecting the speech pattern that is being played in the um, segment so these eight terms would summarize a lot about this paper um, so to jump quickly into the paper so this is the agenda that we'd have for today um, I'd be going over the relevance of such a paper that the authors had um, 
realized why is such a research uh, even necessary in today's day and time and i go over the history that the authors have uh, elaborated in quite some detail and when i say history um, what i understand is a lot about this paper deals with uh, improvising what is already there in the research field uh, within uh, speech to lip generation and then the workflow of the paper itself so like i mentioned they they analyzed a lot about a lot of the history or the work that's already out there or the state of the art that's already out there and they improvised it they um, kind of looked at it in a very critical manner and um, identified the pitfalls and uh, did a lot of uh, a lot of extensive work um, in order to um, in order to uh, you know fine tune it um, and then they were, and after all of this they made four major contributions this paper is given has given four major contribution and almost all the four major contributions have been open sourced it's out there anyone can play with it and then finally they are dealing with the topic of ethics um because uh, something like this deep fake we know all of us hey privacy what is that anyways right so yeah um so ethical concerns are something that they are also addressing in this paper uh, and that will be the order in which i'll be um, going over the presentation uh so to cover the topic of relevance um why is this uh, topic even relevant in today's age and time so uh, especially the post pandemic times or this paper actually came out even before the pandemic time and uh, there is a lot of video consumption video and audio consumption that's happening be it a course delivery be it uh, international dignitaries uh, giving out speeches there is a lot of video consumption that's being happening and in today's age and time it's uh, it is quintessential that um, something uh, like a wonky video we, none of us like none of us like watching it the video the viewing experience is what makes sums up a, a speech so um, if if the video itself is completely uh, out of sync we i would i would quickly change so and the authors have really uh, zeroed on on that key factor and uh, sorry can you still listen to me hello yeah yeah you could okay so my my it just gave gave a message that my internet connection is unstable but anyways so anomaly detection um research shows that uh, a human eye can detect any anomaly in the screen that they are watching within a time span of 0.05 to 0.1 second that's as small a time span in which a human eye can detect the anomaly that's happening in the video so beyond that time i would just switch channels i would just hop to another video uh, which would give me a better um, viewing experience so the anomaly detection is so quick by a human mind so it's extremely relevant that that topic is what is being addressed rather than oh, I, because it's delivered in german i am and i'm hearing in english and i'm fine with it that's not what it is that it, it, it it's about the human viewing experience and um the second factor is the allowed uh, there is only a tiny degree of error that is allowed in a video generation or a, v, a content that is being generated online because of the same reason the anomaly that humans can detect in such a small span of time And then of arbitrary identity who does not make a video these days even the fellowship we started off that was my first video uh, but still even the fellowship um, we started off by making a video uh, video submission right so who does not make a video so an arbitrary identity you and i we have we make a video of ourselves and if the speech is out of place i don't even know if i would have ended up in the fellowship but uh, either way so people of arbitrary identities are increasingly creating content online and uh, that needs to be addressed this the the topic of synchronization needs to be addressed and then like i mentioned the unconstrained um, concept so nobody stands still in a so it's not like the old radio show or opera shows you don't stand in one place we <laughs> you watch videos on tiktok and stuff it's oh my goodness they move around so much so unconstrained is the uh, key here because um, there is varying amounts of pose scale and illumination levels that's being covered in a video segment of just a few um, seconds there's so much of variation so such a topic has extreme relevance in today's age and time um moving on to the history of how this paper evolved um the research like what what they pointed out is fairly new uh, so the whole thing started off in 2017 
and the papers that covered uh, were quite a bunch of papers and um, the early the very early work that is the 2017 papers that is listed here the one and two they dealt with uh, more or less the same concepts um, they dealt with deep learning in this in this space of speech um, and uh, lip synchronization and what they did was they essentially made a mapping for the speech representations to the lip landmarks using several hours of training on a very single user, just a single speaker speaking, and they just trained it on a single speaker, uh, the, and they mapped the speech representations to the lip landmarks. Um, and the more recent work, so that doesn't work in a, in, a, in the settings that we want, uh, that really doesn't work. It's a single speaker, so many hours of training. Now, the more recent one, the first 2019 papers, that's the third and the fourth that's listed here, they dealt with um, the speaker independent approach itself and uh, what, uh, sorry, speaker, in, not, uh, not essentially speaker independent, but um, they dealt with um, generating speech representations by uh, providing it, sorry, generating videos by providing speech representations on a certain number of speakers, like a, a hand-picked number of speakers. Um, and there were random voice segments that were fed and faces had to be, uh, faces had to be generated as per the speech segments. Uh, the more recent ones, that is the, the fifth and the sixth that's uh, pointed out here, took a more speaker independent approach with um, generation models that were being trained on thousands of identities and thousands of voices. And they generated accurate lip movements on uh, not, uh, I wouldn't, uh, on, on, on constrained uh, images, that's like static images or uh, of uh, any identity. So the identity part was now taken care of, but the images were static. And, um, and numerous different um, voice uh, segments. Um, but now, uh, th that those two papers, the fifth and the sixth, even covered the, you know, the text to speech. Uh, synthetic, uh, gen synthetically generated speech patterns, uh, and uh, th that was taken care of, but uh, unconstrained. Still, the problem of uh, unconstrained um, dynamic uh, images uh, needs to be covered, and that's when this paper comes into picture. So that's a bit, a bit of a brief history, and the reason why I go over this history is because, uh, of, uh, like I said, this paper uh, essentially deals with uh, using and or reusing or even. Um, augmenting the factors that um, the rest of the earlier authors had uh, considered. Um, so yeah, the workflow of this uh, paper, uh, they essentially go over uh, the pitfalls, like I said, of the earlier papers and then uh, they modify it and they make it better. So the first thing that they realized was the earlier models were using uh, two, were facing two major pitfalls. One is the reconstruction loss that was being used that is the loss function itself that was being used. And the second was um, the weak lip sync discriminator that was being used. So what do I mean by, uh, what do they mean by the weak, um, sorry, reconstruction loss and weak, so the reconstruction loss that is uh, being used in earlier papers were a pixel level reconstruction loss. Uh, and the authors of this paper justified that that is a very weak judge of a lip sync. What do they mean by that? Uh, the reconstruction loss is computed for the whole image to ensure that the correct post generation preservation of identity and even the background is kept intact. Um, so that is the reason why reconstruction loss was being used. And uh, the problem with that uh, loss is it does not really zero in to the lip sync aspect of, uh, of the generated image. Um, what the authors have uh, recognized is during the training of those uh, old models, uh, only after a half of the training is done, that's about the 11th epoch in a 20 in a 20 epoch run, did the optimization of the lip sync start happening. And the lip sync itself was happening, and the, uh, the optimization of the lip sync itself was happening only about 4% as, as opposed to the whole picture being optimized to the sync, being in sync. Um, so the solution that this paper has suggested is that um, they should go ahead and make a very powerful lip sync discriminator. Um, this discriminator essentially solves the problem, the second problem as well. The second problem stated here is a weak lip sync discriminator. So what? So the, discrimin the discriminator that was used in the earlier models, uh, the problem with those discriminators were, uh, so the earlier model is, the, is called the lip GAN model and the lip GAN model um, the problem with that discriminator was the generated images are so noisy in nature 
and there are so many visual artifacts that the um, discriminator has to uh, focus on uh, like pose like lighting like um, you know, uh, he uh, head shades, different uh, skin tones. There are so many visual artifacts that the discriminator had to focus on that it essentially misses the point of thinking. The, and if, if you look at any video, the first point that we realize that the, the person speaking is out of sync with the speech is when we look at the lip. So the discriminator actually misses the point of thinking the lip. Uh, it, it, it gets to focus on so many noisy different things. Um, so that is a weak discriminator. So the paper, so this paper, the main contribution of this paper is uh, is essentially developing an extremely powerful lip sync discriminator that would enforce the generator to produce accurate lip motion. Um, the the second uh, thing that the authors of this paper realized was uh, they verified the protocols in which the earlier models were being evaluated. And they realized that there were um, major pitfalls in uh, the protocol. Um, so essentially, they laid out uh, uh, the four points that I've written here. They devised new and rigorous evaluation benchmarks devised, uh, derived from standard data sets. So essentially, there, are, there were three standard data sets for lip syncing out there from previous work, and that is LR. Um, sorry, I forget the names, but it's coming up in the earlier slides. All of these four points that's written here is being expanded in the earlier slides. So they, they developed a rigorous evaluation benchmark. They, they developed a new evaluation metric. They developed a new uh, data set that is resynced, named resynced. That is a collection of challenging real world videos. And this remains as a data set to date um, to refer to any kind of lip synchronization problems. And they also devised a new evaluation methodology or evaluation toolkit, which uh, took into consideration not just the quantitative evaluation of the data sets uh, of the image being generated, but also um, subjective evaluation. By subjective evaluation, they mean human evaluations were also taken into consideration and not just computers evaluation, sorry, the systems evaluation. Um, so these are the four major contributions that uh, this paper has put forward. And if I could summarize this, that's in one picture, that's, that's how much it is. They've, uh, they've, they've given to the open source community a wave to lip model, an extremely powerful model that can now synchronize uh, videos to the speech patterns with 91% accuracy. They've devised a new benchmark and a new evaluation metric. They've developed a new, they put together a resynced uh, a, a data set called resync, which uh, serves as an essential benchmark for all synchronization works going forward. And they've also included human evaluation as a criteria with which they can um, evaluate the model. Um, so diving deeper into the contributions one by one. The first one is the model itself. So the model is called the wave to lip model. The model consists of uh, three components. There's actually two components. The third component was added by the authors in order to um, increase the visual appeal of the generated image, not so much the synchronization. Um, but it did uh, it did work in their favor when it came to the human evaluation perspective. Um, so the wave to lip model consists of uh, two discriminators and one generator. The first discriminator that is D1. So you can see here D1, G1, and D2. D1 and G1 are the major components of the model. And D2 is the third discriminator that I mentioned that they added in order to increase the visual quality. Um, so the discriminator D1 is the powerful lip sync expert that we're talking about. That is the whole essence of this model. So the powerful lip sync expert D1 is a discriminator, which is a pre-trained lip sync discriminator. Uh, so how did they develop the discriminator? This lip sync discriminator was developed from a network called SyncNet. SyncNet is a network that was uh, being uh, used in earlier papers. And uh, to summarize what SyncNet does is that uh, this network, SyncNet, is trained on um, discriminate is trained uh, is trained to discriminate between uh, audio and video by randomly sampling audio windows that is either aligned with a video or out of alignment with a video. Uh, it, the sync the SyncNet contains a face encoder and an audio encoder, both uh, which are comprised of stacks of two-dimensional uh, convolutional uh, networks. Um, and an L2 distance is being calculated between the embeddings that is generated by the encoders. And the model is trained for a max margin loss to minimize or maximize 
the distance between the synced or um, unsynced images. So that's this sync net, and that's the old network. They just the authors of this paper just reused it. The only difference they did to sync net was um, earlier for earlier models, sync net was accepting uh, also is being was being input with grayscale images. The authors of this paper gave it color images. Um, they expanded the sync net network to be a more deeper residual to have more deeper residual connections, and they also devised a new loss function. The earlier loss function was clearly not sufficient, the L1 reconstruction loss. So the new loss function that they devised was a combination of um, cosine similarity and uh, binary cross entropy. So essentially what happens is a uh, ReLU um, activated um, audio, the, at the final layer of the discriminator, ReLU activated audio and video um, representations uh, of the, the video segment is uh, being uh, give a, a dot product of both is taken and a value between zero and one, which is a pro which denotes a probability whether the video is in sync or not uh, is being generated. And um, the, the pre-trained lip sync discriminator is being trained. So what is it being pre-trained? It's, it's trained on one of the older data sets that I said, one of the standard data sets that is uh, LRES2, sorry, LRS2. That's a standard data set. It's just coming up in the uh, for, uh, slides to come. So it was pre-trained on that data set. That was the oldest and the uh, most standardized data set that's there out there for lip, -sync lip synchronization. And uh, so it was pre-trained on that data set. And what uh, the results that it yielded was like I, like I said before, 91% accuracy on that data set as opposed to 56% accuracy. It's like a huge jump from previous work. Um, so that is a pre-trained lip discriminator. And this discriminator is not um, trained in a GAN setup, it is just, it is just uh, it is just trained in order to detect lip synchronization. So it is trained and it is frozen. It is not uh, fine tuned any further to out of sync uh, when it is come when it is coupled with the generator. So now on to the generator. The generator G1 that's seen here. Uh, it's the, the generator uh, is actually uh, repurposed from LipGAN, the earlier model that I mentioned, another earlier model that I mentioned. So the, the, the earlier model of uh, generator is being repurposed here. And uh, how is it being repurposed? Sorry, I, I think the next thing, oh, Hans, so sorry, I should have shown this before. Um, yeah, so this, this is the generator. This is the, the to the right, you can see the pre-trained uh, lip sync expert. Um, and you can see the generator to the left, and uh, so that's the that's the first component that I was talking about. But the generator is the second component that I'm talking about. So the generator, which is uh, borrowed from the LibGAN model, um, that comprises of three components, which is the identity encoder, the speech encoder, and the face decoder. Uh, so the identity encoder is a stack of residual uh, convolutional layers that encode a random uh, reference frame, and is concatenated with a post prior within the same channel axis. And the speech encoder is also another stack of um, two-dimensional convolutions um, that is used to encode the speech pattern for a particular segment. And then it's concatenated with the face representations. So when they say face representations, it's, this, it's, it's the representation of the face with the lower half cutoff. Um, the decoder, that is the um, facial decoder that is being used, is a stack of another convolutional layers um, that is used along with transpose convolutions for upsampling. The generator is trained to minimize L1 reconstruction loss between the generated frames and the ground truth frames. So this, this functionality was there in the LibGAN model as well earlier that is being just repurposed in this case. Um, and so that's the generator. And then comes the visual quality discriminator. So with just this generator and the pre-trained lip sync expert, the, the images that were generated were of good sync quality, but they were not so much of uh, a good um, visual quality. So uh, what the authors have done, they added an, an extra discriminator that is again tra uh, trained in the um, GAN setup uh, to uh, discriminate whether a face that was being generated is real or not. So it is just used for that purpose uh, and it outputs a zero or a one, that's it. It has no other uh, no other purpose as uh, other than just, um, you know, outputting a zero or a one, uh, denoting whether it's real or fake. Um, so that's the whole model about um, here. I haven't included equations because the model itself is a bit uh, complicated. So equations would make it even more tough. Um, so the second uh, comp uh, accomplishment by the paper is by is what I said as the evaluation toolkit. So evaluation toolkit consisted of 
uh, creating a new benchmark test set as well as a new evaluation metric. So what do they mean by evaluation test set? Sorry, um, benchmark test set. Um, so these, the, at the bottom three yellow ovals that you see, the LRS2, the LRW, and now LRS3. These are the three standard data sets that's out there up until now um, for lip synchronization. And that's been the data sets that almost all researchers have been referring back to. So the authors of this paper, they essentially took these three data sets and they separated the audio segments and the video segments from each of the uh, data sets and they combined it back in random order in order to create a shuffled group of um, you know video and audio pairs uh, so from the first one lrs2 they yielded like 14000 pairs of um, audio video pairs in the second one they yielded from the lrw they yielded 28000 pairs and the second uh, data set the lrw data set consisted mostly of videos which are of frontal and near frontal view so that portion of videos were being covered and the LRS3, they um, devised like 14,000 pairs of audio video pairs and these videos consisted mostly of the profile view. So they would, so these three data sets together um, were put together to be, make the benchmark test sets, the test, test set, a new test set, a new benchmark test set uh, that was being de uh, devised by the authors um, essentially covered all views or all possible poses of a uh, uh, speaker in a video. Um, so that was a uh, first evaluation toolkit contribution. The second one was a new evaluation metric. So the new evaluation metric that was being uh, devised was based on again the SyncNet uh, as discussed earlier. But the new metric itself were um, LSED and LSEC, that is Lip Sync Error Distance and Lip Sync Error Confidence. Um, so these two metrics were uh, chosen in order to uh, determine the average uh, error between the distance of uh, the lip, uh, sorry, the speech and video representation. That is the first one. And the second one was the confidence with which that the model is outputting the, whether, the, uh, whether the audio video pair is in sync or not. Um, and if the LSED, this metric being low, means it's in good sync, the distance between the video and audio is small, and the video and audio is in good sync. And LSEC having a very high value means that the video audio is in a better sync. The, the model has made a pretty confident um, prediction. So these are the two uh, key evaluation um, benchmarks that this uh, paper has contributed. Um, then the third contribution is a resynced data set. So resynced data set is a new evaluation data set that's out there, N not, not the standard ones that's uh, uh, out there anymore. So resynced data set is a challenging set of data sets which consists of real world data sets. All of these images were being, all of these videos were downloaded from YouTube and uh, the resynced data set consisted of three um, categories of uh, videos. One is the dubbed category, the other second is a random category, and the third is a speech to text category. The dubbed category um, uh, used like naturally out of sync videos, like uh, like the like the German Chancellor's videos, like the translated uh, videos of public addresses was an example of dubbed videos, or even movies, uh, or uh, those were examples of dubbed videos. Then random videos were that random videos that were taken, uh, random audio video pairs that were taken, like um, said before with the benchmark data sets and the text to speech um, data sets were the one that is being covered by um, synthetic uh, that was used to cover synthetic uh, speech patterns um, the specific relevance of this uh, category of uh, images in sorry videos in the data set was in the generation of new videos so if you have a speech pattern and there is the static image of a speaker if you were to generate a new video out of it this uh, category of the data set would be really really useful so a recent data set is out there for you know for us to experiment um, that's the third contribution and the fourth contribution is the re real world evaluation so how the whole model is being evaluated so this table essentially summarizes all what i've spoken so far um, the first column after method, the video type is the dubbed, the random, and the text-to-speech um, uh, category of videos. Uh, and the first two, the LSED and LSEC, are the two new matrices that were being uh, contributed by this paper. And FID, the, if you notice that column FID, 
uh, FID is, uh, I'm sure most of us here on this reading group would know because we've been, well, most of us have been playing with GANs at some point in our fellowship and it's uh, freshet inception distance and that's being used as a standard um, benchmark uh, metric for GANs, uh, that was also being uh, contributed by, sorry, computed uh, for this uh, particular recent data set. Um, although I didn't see the implementation of it in their uh, report, the rest, everything is open source, you can see it. Um, so that these three matrices, the LSED, LSEC and FID are the quantitative uh, evaluation that the system would just train. And while on inference time, it would just give you this, um, the metric. But apart from this, the authors went one step ahead and they took um, a, 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 a subject group of people. I think it was 15 people, I forget what I read, uh, of people and they actually asked them to go through videos that are uh, synced and unsynced or, you know, the speech to video. Uh, so so the, the category that they were um, asked to analyze were unsynced original videos, the speak to video that is the earliest. 2019 paper, the lip GAN is the later 2019 paper, the wave to lip is the current paper and the wave to lip with GAN is the one with the second uh, discriminator, D2 discriminator. So each of these uh, subject uh, um, audience, they were asked to evaluate the output of each of these um, videos and that and they were asked to um, give, their uh, give their marks based on um, the synth synthesizing accuracy, the visual quality of the video, the overall experience that they had, and the preference that they would have for uh, which model or which model output over the other. And like you can see, um, the it's, it's self-explanatory. I, I don't have to read this out. It's going to be boring if I do that. Um, so yeah, the real world evaluation. This is the whole new evaluation metric that they devised. And that's about it. Uh, thanks for listening. Uh, if you guys want, I have a few more videos. This is fun watching. Um, I'll just quickly pay this and I'll wrap up. Oh my God, I've gone 10 minutes over. Sorry, I'll just... One of our methods most critical applications can be in lip syncing dubbed scenes in movies and TV shows. Here is an example of Tony Stark speaking the same dialogue in multiple languages. My name is Tony Stark and I'm not afraid of you. I know you're a coward. So I've decided... Mein Name ist Tony Stark und ich habe keine Angst vor dir. Ich weiß, dass du Feigling bist. Ich habe also entschieden. Mi chiamo Tony Stark und du mi fai paura. So che sei un codardo. Perciò ho deciso. Mio nome è Tony Stark, non tenho medo di você. Sei che você è un covarde. Então ho decidi. Mi nombre es Tony Stark y no me das miedo. Sé que eres un cobarde. Así que decidí. We show another example. Here is a clip of Charlie Chaplin giving his famous speech in Hindi. Maafi chahunga. Par mujhe badshah nahi banna. Mujhe ye sab nahi karna aata. Kisi par bhi hukumat nahi karni. We also show an example of a Hindi movie scene dubbed in English with accurate lip sync. <clears throat> you know it very well. I'm not successful and I'm not in a position that I can come up to your father and talk to him. It is possible to have famous professors delivering lectures in local languages with accurate lip synchronization. Here is Professor Andrew N.G. delivering a lecture in German. Also note that our model handles speech generated from a text-to-speech system without any issues. Das Gebiet der Computervision bewegt sich aufgrund des Aufkommens des tiefen Lernens sehr schnell. Punkt zum Beispiel verwenden selbstfahrende Autos sie jetzt, um eine Vielzahl von Dingen zu erledigen. Another important application of our model can be in synchronizing the lip movements of an animated character. This can be utilized in both animated movies as well as gaming. I'll go around. Wait for my call. We show an interesting futuristic application that can be made possible by our model. In case of a loss of the video signal during a video call, we can now make a realistic video of the speaker, with only the audio signal and the previous video frames received before the signal's loss, thus maintaining a better user experience. We now demonstrate this futuristic application on a recorded video call. Shami Bhaiya, uh, I think he was doing rehab, and he was bowling at a very, like, uh, 120 level pace, like for us, like uh, something, uh, not pace pace. But I thought, okay, he's gonna bowl 120 and he, oh, he promised that he will uh, body. Pe ball nahi Our model can be also used for creation of social media content. 
Here are some famous GIFs that were modified with suitable lip movements for richer expression of emotions. In this case, we use our model to alter the lip movements of speakers in popular GIFs with a suitable phrase. The original GIFs are present on the left side, while the GIFs on the right are with the altered lip movements. Please check out our paper. Um, so that's about it, guys. Uh, yeah.